So before I begin, it's normal to have disagreements on Reddit. For example, this guy. So we did a little exchange in private and it seems like he knows a lot about PT Robin. I mean, he has used them, right? And sometimes people can just get outright offensive and even salty. But wait, what's that? Oh, you don't have him. Oh man. Therefore, before I begin, this is how you don't want to play PT Robin. PT Robin is so useful for his trait extort because what it does is it gives you a 5% chance to proc a steal on an enemy when you land a critical. So you don't really want to build him with too much attack because you don't want to kill the enemy before they drop their loot. So as you can see, the ideal build is to really focus on normal attack and manual link your normal attack such that you can hit as many times as you could to sort of guarantee a extort. But here you can see how it fails in a typical campaign stage because I'm just being swallowed by the creeps. And also it's not very efficient in terms of clearing speed because as you can see, I'm really really struggling here. And in a short moment, you will notice why I turn off my auto skill because as you can see, they are just going to melt away completely. And after all that crazy grind of manually clicking, you notice that my clear time is a measly 4 minutes and 16 seconds just for this loot. And here we see how a team of 3 would handle the same map and I'm just running 2 more units who are my absolute damage dealers. They are not even using arcs but you can see that the kind of speed that they take to clear this map is insane. So imagine replacing Robin with another damage dealer, like Shin for example. So there you go, with just 2 attackers, I'm able to clear this in 47 seconds with about half the loot. So imagine running this so many more times instead of manually grinding with PT Robin. So that's what I'm trying to get at. Some clowns just won't get it. So there are three main areas where he really strives in. So the first one is obviously Transcendence Gate. This is without a doubt the best place for him to be used. Uh, there is no denying it. Uh, and, and these are the skills that I go with. Okay, so as you can see, I only have 30 skill costs SC. So I don't really have a lot to work with. But for Transcendence Gate, uh, what I have are the attack ups, all the crits. This is really important. You need all the crits. Proud Force would be really good because uh, as long as you crit, you are healing yourself which is really nice for him. And also Undead Killer would be quite essential because the final boss, he is Undead type and he takes quite a few hits to kill. I also work with Fast Brave as well as Surprise Attack, Backstab and Double Impact. So as much damage as possible, uh, there's more than enough time for you to proc and extort before you down the boss so yeah if you do not manage to down the boss you can always soft reset the game like close the app reopen the app and fight the boss again but for the most part you want to kill the boss before he drops a uh, really really huge nuke on your team which could potentially wipe you so the lineup that i go with is just pd robin as a soul D uh, soul dps and two other support characters so for my case lena is obviously a healer and prim She's the one who's going to buff my PT Robin with, uh, what's that, the Ice Saber. So it's just some extra damage for PT Robin. As you can see, I did not go with a support character because I do not want too much damage to be done to the boss or whoever. Okay, Because if you do get a Zekers on your team, he's just going to melt the boss in like 3 skills or something like that. And you don't want that. So you want to manually play. So as you can see, I've turned off my auto and you see later that I've also turned off my support help. So when I click a rerun, I'm not actually engaging any supporters. So I can just repeat the map again if I need without having to remove my supporter, which is pretty nice. So as long as you have propped an extort, you can actually just go ahead and cut your skills and kill them. It's fine. Moving on to the next one. It's going to be the same process throughout till the end. So at the start, you want to drop a critical buff to give you the extra 15% crit and then just normal attack all the way.
Do take note that it's really important to turn off your auto because um, his damage really comes from his skills. So as you can see, his normal attack isn't really doing a whole lot of damage, right? It's like 200, 300. But the moment you use his skill, you quickly realize that they're all gone. They have all melted and that's really not what you want. So here we are at the boss fight. As usual, just start off with a critical. Uh, you may start off with an assault rave just so that you can get to the back of him. There we go. And being at okay, I proc an X story so I can actually just kill him. Uh, but being at the back of him is really good because you get to proc more crits, right? Because of the assault. And I accidentally used my assault rave again. So um, the early crimson flare is not something that you need to worry about, but the moment he gets his intel buff up and he drops an abyss gate or I think a crimson flare as well, that would probably kill your entire team. So I'm trying to avoid that by just doing as much damage as I can and honestly his 14 phantom is quite a shitty skill. As you can see the kind of damage that I'm dealing right now is about awesome 2k uh, but as compared to what, like what Tess, Testament right I mean okay he's, he's, he's strong against dark but for his other skills it, it, it hits a lot harder than his 14 Phantom. I'm not sure what 14 Phantom is, maybe it's a magic based damage. But yeah, so this is the first of the three areas that he excels in. And there you go, I have a whole lot of chests over here. Uh, nice. Okay, so sometimes you can actually get more than two 5 star materials, 5 or 6 star. Uh, sometimes you can get 3, and I'm not sure where the third one comes from. It's not from an extra Robin drop, it's I think from one of the earlier earlier enemies at the beginning. And here is the second place that you want to use him at, and that's Royal Capital Eldana. We are not going to go to the hard mode because the map isn't here. In the normal mode, as you can see, Arcane Laboratory, this is the, way, this is the place that you want to be at. Uh, so unlike Transcendence Gate, you do not want to have any characters with you because they are kind of weak and you don't want to kill them too quickly. Okay, so there is a minor difference here. So apart from the fact that you're not using supports, you are also not going to equip all your offensive skills. So you are just going to keep your crits. Uh, undead Killers, I mean you can just leave it there. There are no Undeads in this map. Uh, fast Brave, you don't want that. And what else? Backstep, surprise, double attack, double impact. Yeah, these can go. Uh, the whole point of Axis is to increase crit rate against stones. It's it's irrelevant for most of most of the content, but it's kind of nice to have. Okay, so here we go. I really, really, really like this stage because it drops both uh, your skill books, skill books and magic books. So that's that's really where I get my infinite source of it. Because for this map, they only drop uh, the books. That's all they drop. So the moment you hopefully proc an extort on uh, Lensville, then you can just skill him away. And I'm not sure why I got attracted to Eliza, but yeah, let's just get rid of Lensville first. Sometimes you really need a lot of hits just to get, okay, there we go, we got to extort uh, and just skill him and he's dead and then we move on to this girl. So the reason why I use uh, Granada Warf, I don't know whether you noticed but that's the arc that I chose to use because it comes with a movement speed bonus which is very nice for chasing Eliza for this stage. Like you can see she's, she's really annoying and um, sometimes while chasing you can actually land a few hits so that's really nice. Okay, I'm hoping that I do proc uh, extort here. If not, that's fine, I can just repeat this. Okay, another reason why I really like this stage is because you can just keep auto-running it. You don't really need to cast critical, you don't really need to, cut, uh, to press your normal attack. You can just, I don't know, make coffee and just click replay and replay and replay and eventually you would be able to steal the books. 
So here I got another skill book and I have a total of 53 right now and a little bit less number of magic skill books. And I highly recommend this Aldana Capital over the next place, which is uh, the White Laboratory for one simple reason. So over at the White Laboratory, uh, Laboratory Deaths. So here you can get the two books as well. Um, and why I do not recommend this map is because you need to kill Lily before you kill Lensville in this map. If you kill Lensville first, the round ends, you won't be able to attack Lily after that. So it's just a, a single boss fight. Um, but however, in Eldena Capital, if you kill Lensville, you can still continue killing Eliza. So she's still out there for you to hit, which is very, very nice, especially if you want to run this completely automatic. Uh, for the white laboratory, like I said, if you run it automatically, uh, chances are you will be killing Lensville before you kill Lily. And I mean, you don't have to kill anyone, you don't have to kill Lily, but you might want to have some chances for extort prop. So this is also why I chose to turn off my skill casting, my automatic skill casting. Because you don't, you really don't want to do so much damage to them and you just want to be able to normal attack them as much as you can. And of course the third and the last place is actually your ability gates. Um, but I'm not really going to do it because I don't really need ability gates but same logic you can run the same team as a Transcendence Gate team, uh, run the same attacking skills that you might want to equip on him. And yeah, so these are the three places that PT Robin really excels at. You don't want to use him for your normal grinding team because m most of the time he's going to be under-equipped. Right? You, you, most of the time you want him to be weak so that he can hit many more times before killing the enemy. So. It, the same logic doesn't really work with campaign stages, so as such, uh, these, this is how I feel P.D. Robin should be played. I, I will not, I probably will not use him for my campaign clearing stages, uh, instead I might actually use Mage Robin. I feel that Mage Robin is a lot better because the moment he gets a T3 off, he is most likely going to get you uh, a couple of chests by the end of the map itself. So yeah, I hope this, inf uh, this video was informative and I hope I clarified any doubts, especially to uh, the, the beloved Intel at the start of the video. And if you have any questions, just drop a message down below or you can just PM me on Reddit itself. So with that said, I'll see you in the next one.